listening and watching to all of the, uh, watching all of this and listening to all of it. Professor Dirk Kotz is a professor of political science at UNISA, the University of South Africa. Professor, good afternoon to you. So we have from these parties a claim that they're making progress. Is it important for them to build momentum? If they lose momentum, if they enter drift, could they end up fighting? Yes, that is indeed so. I think you are very much correct with that. Um, that it is very important for them to, to create the impression for the public, for us, that there is certainly the development of a, of a momentum, um, that, they, that there's no issues on which they become stuck, that there's some form of deadlock or so that amongst them, um, and that there's a convergence of ideas uh, between the different parties. I mean, this, the, this is the very nature of this notion of a moonshot pack or now that of a charter, a multi-party charter, um, is to for, for parties to come together in terms of developing some form of a common understanding, common values, that they talk now about a common vision also, um, which I think is very important to, for the public to understand. It doesn't mean they are forming a new party. Um, this is, a, as they call it, a charter, so it's an overarching structure. But within it, the, the individual parties will be very jealous about maintaining their own identity still. Um, they must have, if they're making progress on the first day, and there's a little bit of uh, performative politics to this. I have no problem with that. I'm just saying it seems to me there's probably been quite a lot of work in the background over the last few weeks ahead of today. Yes, that has become uh, known that uh, Pres uh, Professor uh, Kumeri, he has been involved in quite a lot of meetings uh, with representatives of the parties, not necessarily the, the leaders, in preparation for today and tomorrow. So what we are seeing today actually is the end result of that process. It's not that they negotiated it today or that they reached the, the final um, agreement on it today. I think that has been done some time back already. But today is in a sense the ceremonial acceptance or the public acceptance and announcement of it. So uh, I think one should not therefore look at it as a two-day event, but rather as an ongoing process. You made the point that people shouldn't think that political parties are going to lose their own identity. Isn't that quite tricky in a way? I mean, some of these parties represent quite different constituencies. Some of the constituencies, you know, some represent people who mainly live in urban areas, some in rural areas, some people represent different constituencies that, have, that really speak different languages. Does that matter or not really? Well, it, it does matter because what a coalition represents or can represent in the South African context, for example, next year we already look at local government, is that it will broaden the inclusivity of the political spectrum in government. And I think this is one of the very important points about the idea of coalition government in South Africa and the opportunities it creates. It's not simply that the objective is to reach 50% plus one. Um, and to be able to form a government. But it is also because of the, the very traumatic situation that South Africa is going through in many respects, the state capture, ESCOM, you, you can name it, the, the pandemic, that there is now again a process of convergence, of coming together. And I think from a political point of view, this is possibly one of the best uh, approaches to follow, is to create more inclusivity in government. We are not yet talking about a, politi uh, a government of national unity, but in its more extreme form, that will be the case, to have a government of national unity. Some talk about the idea of a grand coalition, which is maybe slightly less than that of a, a government of national unity. But I think this, this is why the more diverse this group will be, the, the better in terms of in, um, inclusivity. Think about, on the one hand, we have freedom, the Freedom Front Plus. On the other hand, we have a group which is not well known yet, and that's the Independent SAMCO, the South African National Civic Organization. The original SAMCO is part of the Tripartite Alliance together with the ANC and the Communist Party in Kusatu. So this group is coming from there, um, and that means that it extends, it broadens the, the political spectrum that's being um, represented in this situation. Um, it's so interesting that you point out that this is a group of diverse political parties trying to come together because up until this point in the history of South Africa as a nation state from, depending on where you want to start, but probably 1910, 
the only political party which has been able to get diverse people to work together has been the African National Congress. So in a way, these political parties are doing what the ANC started to do back in 1912. Yes, that's indeed so. And if you move a little bit on in history, 1955, the Congress of the People consisted of the ANC, uh, the South African Indian Congress, the Colored People's Congress, the Congress of Democrats, and Sakti. So that in itself sort of represents what you are saying. Um, what was supposed to be the case around about 1960, about the idea of uh, maybe a national convention that Nelson Mandela proposed, that obviously didn't happen, but that was the same intention. So I think what, what we are seeing now, but many people will, is, is going in that direction. Obviously, many people will say it's only a, a portion or a part of the South African uh, political landscape because the ANC is not part of it, the EFF is not part of it, and, and several other parties are not part of it. So it's not completely inclusive. But this is a first step. There appears to be a little bit of debate around who the leader should be. And in the run-up to this, the leader of the Freedom Front Plus, Peter Grunewald, said he, in his political view, South Africa was, I think the phrase he used was, not ready for a white president. Of course, the memories of apartheid are very fresh. Um, it appears that they're suggesting the IFP leader, Velikosini Khlabisa, should be the leader of this. Does the leadership matter? I mean, if there's no agreement on that, then the whole thing will probably fail. Yes, I think this is going to be quite a decisive matter of whether they want to have a single leader who will sort of personify this formation, this group, or whether they want to have more of a collective leadership. Think about, for example, the UDF. It's now the anniversary of the UDF. There wasn't one single leader. It was a collective leadership, um, and they produced the results uh, very in, in very quite sort of dramatic way in that 1990, ultimately. So I would be hesitant to promote the idea of one single leader. I think for where they stand at the moment, it possibly, maybe it can be interim arrangement, but for the foreseeable future, I don't think they must necessarily try to identify one person from one party, because then we are, it will have either two, two results. The one is the dominant party is almost supposed to be, per definition, the leading one, which will be the, the Democratic Alliance, or you go to a very small party who is not at all sort of a, con a contentious party, not one of the big players. And then you are back to the situation of the ATM and al and so on as that we have at local government level. So I think to avoid these contradictions, one should be able to say, for the interim at least, um, rather have a type of a collective approach. Professor Dirk Kotzer, thank you. Professor of Political Sciences at the University of South Africa.